Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? Welcome to Dive is Ready and welcome to this, the next in our quick tip series of videos. My name is James. This week, I'm going to be going over cutting tools for scuba divers as quickly as possible. We're going to be talking about three reasons that you need a cutting tool as a diver and one reason you absolutely do not. We're going to be going over the three main styles of cutting tool and what each one is best suited for, the pros and cons of each if you like. And then stay tuned to the end of this video where I'm going to be giving you my pro advice on how to mount a cutting tool to your BCD rig. Lots to get through, safe to say I'm probably not going to hit my five minute marker, but let's get started anyway. Follow me. First then, three reasons why you need a cutting tool. Number one reason is as a cleanup tool. That's probably the most common reason that I actually use my cutting tool while I'm scuba diving. We've all seen those viral videos of a turtle or a whale shark being freed from a net. Cool, you can't do that without a cutting tool. So yeah, I've never actually done that myself, but I've taken miles and miles of monofilament off of the reefs and off of the wrecks. Um, so yeah, that's number one reason. Number two reason is to free yourself or your buddy from a potential entanglement. Definitely for wreck divers or for anyone using line in the water, entanglement is a very real possibility. Can't get out of an entanglement without a cutting tool in most cases. And the third reason that you might want a cutting tool as a scuba diver is in the event of a medical emergency. If you do a rescue diver course, you're gonna be taught how to recover an unconscious diver. And part of that is in water gear removal. Now, sometimes it's as easy as just pinching a few pinch clips. However, if they're in a harness or anything like that, whip out your cutting tool and cut it off of them. I'm sorry you're there to save a life, not save their dive gear. And as promised, one reason you definitely don't need to carry a cutting tool as a diver is to fend off marine predators. Seriously, there are people out there who think strapping a large Rambo style knife to some part of their anatomy is gonna help them ward off a shark that's taken a bit too much interest in them. Number one, that's not a thing that actually ever happens. And number two, you probably shouldn't be in the water if you think that it is. So just stay home, all right? Stay home, please. Okay, let's switch to the overhead rig. Now what I've got for you here are examples of each of the three main styles of cutting tools. So I've got a pair of shears, uh, sea snips in this case, which come in their own kind of sheath, scissor style. I've got a couple of different knives to show you. We'll talk about those and we'll talk about the line cutter style tool. Let's go through the pros and cons of each, starting with the shears. As you can see, basically a pair of scissors similar to the kinds that you would get in a medical kit. All right, um, they come in a sheath, so they lie flat. We'll talk about mounting in a little while, but needless to say, they've got a nice little belt loop there, so you can slide it onto the waistband of your harness or your BCD. Um, they also have a mounting clip at the end, which I wouldn't trust at all, it looks pretty crappy. But inside, you've got a nice sharp pair of scissors. Now, I've got some line here, and I've got some webbing. Let's see how well these cut. No problem with that at all, through the webbing. A little bit more work, but it gets the job done. So the pros of that, it cuts reasonably okay. They're also good on monofilament. I couldn't find any in my house to, get, to actually cut through for you, uh, but they do cut monofilament as well. I would say they're, they're generally a decent option to have in your kit. Um, the downside, the cons, if you will, uh, they can be difficult to maintain because you've really got to take them out, make sure you get fresh water in here on both sides um, and rinse it out to make sure they don't rust because they do tend to rust very easily. The other con is if they do rust or if they get blunt, you've got to chuck them away. They're basically disposable. There's no way to replace the blades. We've got two different kinds of knife here. I've got a folding knife from Armour and I've got a flat knife from Dive Gear Express, which is just one single piece of titanium. Now you notice both knives have a line cutter built in. That hook style there is designed for cutting line. So let's see how well that works. I mean, a bit more of a struggle than the snips, but it did get the job done. I'm a big fan of titanium as a material for knives because obviously it doesn't rust, it stays sharp for a long time. And I'm a big fan of this knife in particular because it's small, it's compact, it comes in its own little sheath that has a belt loop so I can slide it onto my harness. And then in a long hose configuration, I actually run my hose under this knife and it kind of stops the hose from flapping up. But as a cutting tool, uh, yeah, it's nice, it's compact, it's small. I don't generally go for a folding knife such as this one because too many moving parts, too difficult to keep it clean. Um, yes, the blade is titanium, but you've got steel 
pins in the handle itself and those are going to rust over time and also mounting options there's no sheath or anything like that for it it just folds back in the handle and you've got this little clip here that you'd find on a two cent biro which i wouldn't trust to not losing that knife so that means that's probably going to have to go into a pocket and there are some disadvantages with that that i'll talk about shortly last but by no means least you've got a traditional line cutter the advantages being these are really small and really compact um, also they have changeable blades normally when you buy a line cutter you'll actually get a spare set of blades i think this one's brand new this is part of the uh, dive right giveaway we'll be giving away next week uh, i've got a whole bunch of accessories coming up but yeah so you've got a nice blade in there that's got two uh stainless steel screws and then you've got a packet of spare blades on the back so when it does if it does rust or corrode you can change it out real easily you can see spots of rust on this blade already even though i just changed them let's test out the cutting ability like a knife through butter same with monofilament it just cuts very easily straight down here yep not too much effort at all again if there was tension on that if somebody was wearing it like a hot knife through butter so in summary then i prefer to keep the shears on the boat as part of the med kit very useful for cutting a unconscious diver out of their wetsuit for example um, i very much like to have the knife on me while i dive i find this is a very good self-rescue tool uh, and it's nice and small compact and easy to mount on a harness i don't generally use a folding knife i've had this knife for a long time uh, i don't think i've ever got it wet uh, but i do use it for opening boxes around the office that's about as much as that action as that sees and then i normally keep a line cutter on me as my secondary tool um, we'll talk about the reason for having two cutting devices right now actually next i want to go through how to mount a cutting tool how to carry it as a diver and i want to go through a few mistakes that i see divers make frequently the first mistake is not mounting the knife on your upper body now i have my wife's bcd here it's a zegel stiletto it's a jacket style bcd she absolutely loves it it's bomb proof she's been diving it for a long time now uh, and you can see that her knife is clearly mounted there on the waistband over the cummerbund um, the reason you want to do that is that you want to make sure that it's accessible if you need to get your knife out because of entanglement having it strapped to your calf is no use at all. We really don't go in for that sort of thing anymore. In fact, it's one of the telltale signs. If you look around at dive professionals on a dive boat and they see somebody strapping a knife onto their calf muscle, they're gonna be giving you the eye. They're gonna be giving you the, mm, yeah, gotta watch out for you. It's just not a done thing. So you wanna make sure that you're mounting the knife on your upper body. The second mistake is, if you're gonna carry a cutting tool in the event of entanglement, like you're doing some wreck diving or even advanced wreck diving, you need to be able to reach the cutting tool with either hand. And if you can't, that may mean that you need to carry more than one cutting tool. But as you can see, my wife having it clearly here, it's a pinch lock system. She can grab it with either hand nice and easily. I'll often carry one on each hip or I'll have one on each wrist, uh, on each dive computer strap. Uh, that way I can always get to one or the other. The third mistake I see people make frequently is securing their cutting tool with zip ties or cable ties. These become brittle in UV sunlight. They don't give you any warning when they give out. And one day you'll just dry and stride into the water. Your cutting tool will come pinging off of your system and you'll never see it again. So on that subject, let's talk about how to secure the actual cutting tool. This one from Aqualung, I think it is, actually comes with a proper belt slide there that's secured with a screw so that is not coming off but any of those ones that just have a clip like a pen that that's not an acceptable way now a lot of people would carry that folding style knife that i showed you a moment ago and put it in their pocket and that's all well and good your pocket zipped up and all that that good stuff but can you then reach it with both hands can you undo this zipper on the left side of the bcd with your right hand all the way back there and reach in there and get the knife out the bottom possibly uh, but possibly not, especially if you've got other things in that pocket and this arm is entangled. So you want to have a think about that. I prefer knives that come with a two inch webbing loop because I generally start dive a backplate style, either a Hogarthian harness or my dive right hydrolyte. Both of those feature two inch webbing, which I can slide a knife onto easier and secure it with either a D ring over the top or a weight or something like that to stop it from sliding clean off. In fact, let me show you what that looks like. This is my back plate and harness, and as you can see there, I've got that flat style knife, single piece of titanium on my right hip. Uh, and it's just secured by a slider, a D-ring, and then my working double ender that I use 
for my accessories. So that clips off on there and I use it when I need it and then there's no way for that to slide off and off the male end of my belt loop and end up on the deck of the boat or over the side. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already and click the little bell icon so you're notified every time we drop a new video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below what kind of cutting tool do you use? Are you happy with it? Uh, just over here, I'll put our other quick tips videos for you to check out. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, my name's James. This was your quick tips video this week from Divers Ready. Dive safe, dive often.